At the Blackheath factory in Cape Town, Continental China has a world-class production facility, which has recently been expanded to meet export requirements. Here is a brief overview of the production process, a process that takes aluminas, silicas and feldspars and turns them into hotelware, combining form and function into a desirable world-class product. A product that creates employment and prosperity for all who participate in this endeavor. High quality raw materials are sourced from local and international sources and stored in the raw material store. All material is tested and approved by the laboratory before mixing and going into production. After the testing the raw material is weighed and loaded for processing. It is milled with water and sifted with a fine mesh to remove lignaceous matter and any oversized particles. The ball mills disperse the sand, alumina and feldspar to a standard particle size which is formulated into a clay body. Iron particles are removed by electromagnets before the slip is stored in the underground arc. The material is then pumped through stainless steel pipes to the high pressure filter presses to dewater the slip before being dropped and shredded in a de-airing pud mill to extrude the clay body. Original models for hollowware, cups and flatware are produced here by master craftsmen. From the model master cases and molds are produced. Blocks, cases and rubber holders for the sponging process are made by master mold makers. Rubber cases for high definition molds are also made here. Standard back rings are used to ensure mold consistency. Dies for the pressure casting machines are made from a porous synthetic material which has a long life. To prevent algae from getting into the pores, it is produced and stored in a temperature controlled environment. By having this capability in-house, we are able to control the quality of the process and shorten lead times. The cases are prepared and vacuum blended plaster of Paris is poured into the case and then allowed to set. The molds are then released and the case is cleaned for further mold making. The molds have to dry for two days before storage and then stored for two weeks before usage. We produce 420 different items which requires 50 to 500 molds per production cycle for each item. A month's supply is prepared in advance for a production cycle. Forming a plate. The mold goes into a jigger head and takes the extruded clay under vacuum. The tool that comes down on the blank is heated and rotates at high speed to form the back of the plate. The piece then goes through a dryer till it reaches 14% moisture content, at which point it can be released from the mold. The molds are reused once the piece has been removed. After making approximately 150 pieces, the molds are then discarded. Forming a cup. The handle is cast and removed from the mold. The cast handle is placed into the de-seaming machine for removing the seam, sponged and cut to the radius curvature of the cup. It is then stacked before being fitted to the cup. The cup blank is formed by a rotating forming tool and the mold in the jigger head. The piece is lifted out of the mold by hot air blowing over the piece, causing it to shrink. The handle is applied with firm finger pressure and sticking slip. It is allowed to harden, then overlooked, sponged and quality inspected before bisque firing. Defective cups are removed and recycled. Casting hollowware. The plaster of Paris mold is filled with slip. The plaster mold then dewaters the slip, forming the solid piece inside. Excess slip is tipped away and the piece is then released from the mold.
The piece is then fettled. The seams removed, sponged and cleaned from residue. The lid and pot is checked for fit and finish. Pressure casting machines make oval platters and deeper square or oval shapes. Under high pressure the slip is injected into the synthetic mold and dewatered. The cycle time is 3 minutes before the item is taken from the mold. The piece is put on a bat and taken to the dryer after which it is fettled and sponged. The ware is now stacked for the bisque firing process in the tunnel kiln. The biscuit kiln cars are loaded with clay ware ready for firing. The kiln fires 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Therefore a constant supply is required for nights and weekends. During biscuit firing, the clay changes from porous slurry to full vitrification. The ware is fired on a 40 hour cycle at 1240 degrees centigrade. The kiln is held at this temperature over five hours to ensure each piece is fully vitrified. After the load has been pulled through the kiln, it is offloaded and ready for selection and backstamping. Once the ware has been checked and selected, it goes through a vibro machine to polish the face and back and to remove blemishes. The back stamp is now applied to the piece. The back stamp is screen printed to a substrate and the silicon pad transfers it to the biscuit piece. Back stamp is sealed under the glaze. After laboratory testing, the raw material is crushed and mixed to a standard recipe. Fully fretted glazes are mixed with clay and ground in a ball mill to a known specification prior to dipping and spraying. The back stamped blank is preheated and sent through a spraying machine which puts an even coat of glaze on the front and back of the piece. It is dried prior to handling before gloss firing. Each piece is now placed on three pins on a crank for firing. This is to prevent the glaze from fusing to the crank when firing. When firing, the glaze turns to glass and fuses to the biscuit. Hollow ware is hand dipped in glaze for an even coating. The excess is shaken off and the piece is put in a dryer prior to foot wiping. The ware is now glossed fired at 1100 degrees centigrade and fired from cold to cold in a continuous 24 hour cycle. After the ware is fired, it is stripped from the kiln and sent to the genetting machine to remove the pin marks from the back of the plate. Tungsten carbide tip tools rotate against the back of the plate to grind away the refractory. Underglaze decoration is either done by hand or the application of silkscreen printed ceramic decals. Hand banders line various items from cups to plates to teapots. Here a Cosmo plate is wash banded and hand lined. More intricate patterns are created by artists using conventional paint techniques and by designers on computers. Ceramic decals are then printed via a silkscreen process including a flux coat then wetted and applied by hand. Rubbing gently all water and air is removed from beneath the decal. After decorating and drying the ware is loaded into cranks and fired in the decorating kiln at 850 degrees centigrade. At this temperature the decoration is fused into the glaze which makes it extremely durable, scratch and dishwasher resistant.
The ware is then checked again, selected and then packed into boxes and sent to the warehouse. A three-month supply of stock is maintained of all shapes. 40% of the stock is distributed between Johannesburg and Durban. Export orders are dispatched from the Cape Town warehouse. Each order is randomly quality checked before dispatch to ensure that the agreed local and export quality standards are met.